The Mkontowe Sijwe parliamentary leader, Dr. John Klopp, he announced his immediate resignation as a member of the Judicial Service Commission on Monday. This follows the Western Cape High Court's decision to hold Klopp from participating in an interview process to fill vacant posts in the country after he was impeached as a judge in March for gross misconduct. Now, while many believe that Klopp's exit from the JSC is a critical win for South Africa's judiciary, some are wondering where to from here uh, for Klope in his judicial career. Well, hi, to Dumelang, a very good evening. My name is Tabo Mulukwan. Welcome to this edition of Soweto Today. Tonight, we wrestle and tackle some legal matters as MK parliamentary leader Dr. John Klope resigned from the JSC in terms of what this means uh, for the JSC and Klope's future in the justice sector. Joining us via Zoom to kick start the conversation is attorney and coordinator of Judges Meta, Alison Tyler. Um, Alison, much appreciated for joining us. Uh, good evening. Welcome to the show. Thank you very much. Much appreciated. I mean, let's, uh, you know, uh, begin the conversation by just maybe if you can just unpack it for us. What is the Judicial Service Commission and also what is the actual purpose of the JSC for those who may not have an idea? So the, the Judicial Services Commission is a structure that was introduced in the, the new constitution, not so new now. Um, and, and really what it does is puts 23 people in the room and they range from the Chief Justice through to heads of court, uh, members of parliament. And the idea is that these commissioners come together and they appoint judges uh, to the courts, the high courts in, in the country. Mm. So, um, I mean, what do you make of, uh, you know, the latest developments with uh, Dr. Uh, Kropp's very recent resignation with immediate effect? I mean, as well as the MK party removing him as a nomination. I mean, uh, you know, when I was listening to the JSC yesterday, uh, um, the spokesperson that mentioned that actually they haven't received uh, you know, proper correspondence from uh, uh, the Speaker of Parliament in terms of um, the resignation of Klopp. What does this mean? Because now it's, uh, you know, the, the, the interviews are continuing at this stage, but uh, we know that uh, a member's short there. Well, it's, it's not, strictly speaking, no, it's not a member short. Um, what has happened is that there's a member who's unable to attend the sitting, and that's a different question. Mm. Uh, and we know that Dr. Klope was, uh, Dr. Klope was unable to attend the sitting uh, because of the interdict that was granted that stopped him from doing so. He's now decided that he wants to step down, apparently, um, but he's been put in that position by Parliament. So we would expect Parliament to remove him and appoint somebody else. That's obviously going to take a bit of time. And I don't anticipate that happening soon, and certainly not before the end of this hearing. So this hearing will go ahead, and we would probably see a new commission in place in April of 2025. Mm. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm very much interested in finding out, so what happens now? I mean, obviously, uh, as you're saying, that there isn't a member short there. I mean, the Democratic Alliance, uh, you know, uh, drew the first blood in its battle to get, uh, you know, MK Party's former parliamentary leader, uh, Klope, kicked off for the Judicial Service Commission. I mean, he has obviously now resigned. Was the DA's interdict worth it? Or, uh, you know, what does this mean now for the JSC as a whole? Because the MK Party did release a statement saying that they will not uh, feel, you know, they will not be fielding um, a candidate for the JSC position. Mm hmm. No, look, it, it, the, the non-participation of one member of parliament is, is, doesn't make a difference in terms of quorum. So the meeting is quorum. Um, there have been some previous court cases that have tried to indicate to us how to treat people not attending the JSC. And there are some people that we know must attend. And if they're not going to attend, they have to have an alternate. And if there's no uh, alternate, they have to give a good reason for not being there. But there have been many instances, all the JSC meetings that, that I've sat in on, where there is one or, or other person who can't come. Uh, and that does not mean that the JSC can't proceed. Uh, remember that there are 10 members of parliament. 
who are in these proceedings. And so members of parliament are well represented, overrepresented in some people's view. They should they take the view that there should be fewer members of parliament. But um, that that discussion aside, um, the the people who need to be in the room are in the room or give apologies uh, or for some reason cannot attend. And and the reason that Dr. Schopa cannot attend these hearings is, is obviously because of that intellect. Mm. Uh, I mean, Alison, I'm interested in finding out from you. I don't want to put you on the spot with this, but I'm interested in finding out uh, how did we get here, uh, you know, uh, in terms of uh, the process from the beginning? I mean, uh, if, uh, you know, he, had, he hadn't been elected into the JSC, because we know the JSC is the one that, you know, recommended uh, for his impeachment, uh, you know, to Parliament there. But, uh, you know, I'm asking myself why um, this issue wasn't dealt, uh, you know, with in the first place. Well, I think that's that's a really good question. The, the, the question is why why are we here in the first place? And the, mm -hmm. the, the question is why um, was Dr. Flope put forward by MK? I think MK have said, well, you know, he represents us. He represents the people who voted for us. They voted for, for him. Of course, he wasn't on the list for MK for Parliament. So nobody did actually vote in that sense for him because mm. we didn't know that that he was standing for that position once uh, mk had had chosen to to put him in parliament it was never going to be a good idea to ask an, an impeached judge uh, to sit on the commission that appoints judges it's true that the constitution doesn't say that but i think it's more because the constitution didn't imagine that that was going to be the case. So there's no specific provision, um, but Parliament certainly should have uh, considered that uh, mm. question and it was rational of them to put him forward. Uh, they they didn't, that's why the interdict was sought. Now we're gonna to have to go to Parliament and work out what the parliamentary process should have been uh, and, and how Parliament needs to engage with this kind of decision. We know, we think we know, so far, the parliament can't just rubber stamp who a party puts forward. Mm. But we don't know at this point what further rules there will be around that. And that's now in the hands of, that's now in the hands of parliament. But frankly, we've wasted a lot of time, a lot of court time, which is precious, um, a lot of money on litigation uh, to to end up here where uh, Dr. Floppe is, is not participating. Mm. Alison, we're going to take a quick ad break. Uh, our guest this evening is Alison Tyler, who is the attorney and coordinator of Judges Matter. She joins us via Zoom as we unpack Dr. John Klopper's very recent resignation and what this actually means for the JSC and perhaps a way forward when it comes to resolving matters relating to corruption in South Africa. We continue the conversation right after the ad break. Welcome back. You're still watching. So we're today. Much appreciated for joining us this evening. Now, before the ad break, we started the conversation on Dr. Klopp's resignation from the JSC. This is a topic that currently has a legal expert, uh, you know, talking uh, and, uh, you know, various commentators also just making their comments on it. We continue the conversation with Alison Tyler, who is an attorney and coordinator of the Judges Matter. She joins us. Uh, this evening via Zoom to unpack this. Uh, listen, much appreciated for uh, staying on. I mean, let's now take a look at uh, matters concerning the Constitutional Court. I mean, uh, you know, when you look at the requirements uh, of uh, the Constitutional uh, Court uh, in, in this instance, I mean, to obtain an interdict at a preliminary stage, certain requirements are needed. Uh, yes, they are. And and the, the interim order, certainly um, the court said that uh, they felt that there was a case to meet, and the requirements of the of the urgent order were met. Um, that was in relation to interdicting uh, Dr. Klopp from coming. Of course, there was a second application brought uh, by uh, MK in which they asked for a court order allowing him to come, and that was uh, dismissed by the Gauteng High Court on Saturday. 
Mm. So is one able to appeal these kinds of interdicts? And um, I mean, what would it take for a grave uh, injustice to occur in this instance? Mm. So usually the, the rule is that you can't appeal interim orders. And there's a, there's a good reason behind that. So you, you imagine you're in the middle of a, of a, of a football game uh, and the, the referee um, you know, makes, a, makes a ruling on something. You can't then stop the whole game and then appeal the referee's decision. Mm. There may be some question at the end of the game as to whether the decisions were made fairly or not, but the game has to be played. And, and really the intention with, with court proceedings is that if you get to the end of the game and you feel that a part of the game was unfair, then you can go on appeal. But you can't go on appeal in the middle. Um, there are rulings given though in the middle of the game. And those rulings are important because you need the game to be played fairly. But those, those are those decisions which are really trying to make sure that the, the game is played according to the rules. But we don't generally allow uh, that appeal to happen while matters are still underway. It's not impossible, can happen, um, but it happens in rare situations and, and I don't think this was this is one of them. Mm. Just before I let you go, Alison, I mean, Judge Mandi Samaya has uh, made a historic appointment, uh, you know, by being the first woman Chief Justice to head the Constitutional Court. I mean, this was her first sitting, uh, you know, scheduled yesterday. Uh, what do we need to take from her when it comes to matters involving corruption or just, uh, you know, uh, the questions that have been raised about uh, uh, judicial independence? Well, I think we've we've been pleased uh, and, and impressed so far. Um, the commission are settled, they're working, they're asking the right questions. Um, we've seen a lot of really good questions come from the commissioners. The commissioners run to time, um, so more or less they're, they're, we're not looking at a situation where the hearing goes on until late. So I think in, in general terms, we've been very impressed with her, her mm. chairing of the JSC. Mm. Are, are we likely to see more women, you know, uh, being appointed as judges? I mean, you look at the Supreme Court of Appeal, uh, you know, uh, these highest positions, uh, I mean, with uh, Judge uh, Mandi Samaya now, you know, leading uh, the pack, uh, do, do we, you know, see things changing uh, from, uh, you know, um, the former courts in future? I think we've seen significant transformation in the courts. Um, and I think we've certainly reached a point where uh, there's, there's uh, really the, the court, the bench looks quite different from it 30 years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, is it enough? That's always a good question. And in different courts, I think there are different issues at play. But um, it's, it's certainly been very exciting to see the, the new Chief Justice take the helm in, in the JSC. So it's a really important milestone. Alison, much appreciated for joining us uh, this evening. Always a pleasure. Thank you very much. That was Alison Tyler, attorney and coordinator of Judges Matter, joining us to give us some insight uh, on the Judicial Service Commission outlines, you know, as uh, Dr. John Thorpe from the uh, MK party recently resigned with the immediate effect. I mean, uh, she did touch on, you know, the very important aspect there uh, when I asked the question on uh, why did, uh, you know, uh, Parliament or just the JSC wait so long to address uh, their concerns, uh, especially from uh, the parties that, uh, you know, took the matter to court. They're saying that uh, they should have dealt with this issue in the first place. We're going to park it there for now. When we come back, we loop in a political analyst into the conversation. Do stay with us. Welcome back. You're still watching Soweto Today. Much appreciated for joining us. My name is Tabo Malukwani. We are getting closer to the end of the show, but we continue the conversation on Dr. John Klopp's immediate resignation and what this ultimately means for the JSC. We now switch uh, our gears to speak further on this matter with uh, sociologist and political analyst Tessa Dooms who's joining us in studio this evening. Uh, Tessa, much appreciated for coming in. Welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. I mean, let's start the conversation by just looking at, you know, 
the resignation of Dr. John Klopp, your reaction to that? I mean, uh, they took the matter to the courts. Was it really anticipated that the party would, uh, I mean, uh, he would resign from the JSC? Well, the party that took it to the courts was the DA. So the Democratic Alliance went to go and challenge his ability to be on the JSE, um, and they won that matter. Mm. Um, so any further legal action would be a response from the MK party to having lost that judgment. Um, you know, this is all time sensitive in terms of the fact that the JSC has to sit. And so the JSC is not um, compelled to make sure that all um, members are present when it continues. Yeah. So um, his resignation doesn't change anything about the JSC and its ability to proceed because really it's up to the MK party to fill that position. If, for example, they did fill the position um, like any other party and somebody didn't show up, the JSC would still proceed. Mm -hmm. um, so the MK party would have known that they're going to be in a prejudicial um, situation yeah. if they lost the court case because it was so, such a time-limited um, event. So that he, he was then withdrawn or that the, the MK party um, had him resign from that is really just to follow the law um, because it would have been, um, it, if he's continued uh, presence in the JSC, would basically make it illegal. And yeah. so they wouldn't want to go through that. And so it was um, then the, the next best thing or the next um, step would be his resignation by default. Because I've been asking this question that, uh, you know, why in the first place did we have, uh, you know, his appointment uh, to the JSC while we know that he was an impeached uh, judge, especially from the recommendations from the JSC. So, uh, I mean, somehow, somehow you then ask yourself, uh, why was the process actually uh, you know, do not get stopped in the first place? Well, I mean, that's a political question rather than a legal one. Yeah. I mean, right now we're at the back of a legal um, debate. But really the political question is, um, who should be allowed to serve in Parliament? And we've seen this already round one of this with the MK party, where they tried to have um, former President Jacob Zuma become a parliamentarian. Yeah. And it was for the first time, I think, in the country's history, a debate about what the prerequisites are, the requirements are to be a parliamentarian. And as a country, I don't think we've reflected enough on what parliamentarians are and yeah. what they do. Parliamentarians are lawmakers. Our MPs are the ones who make our laws. That is even a higher standard than the judiciary that have to enforce those laws, that have to make sure those laws are complied with or interpret those laws. The MPs make laws. And so when you have MPs that come in, the question about whether they are law abiding should be one of the first considerations that we make about who we allow to be in those seats. Mm -hmm. That's why there was this big contentious issue around former President Jacob Zuma, because he's recently in, in less than five years, because the constitution says you have to be done with your sentence yeah, for five okay, years. So. That's why Gaten McKenzie can be a member of parliament even though he's um, been convicted before because more than five years has lapsed since he left prison. But this is about the question of, do the people who go to go and be lawmakers respect the law? And the constitution says you need at least five years in between the time the person disrespected the law and paid the price for that and the time that they can be seen as a lawmaker. With Judge Flopey, it's not about him having broken the law. Yeah. It's about the fact that he was once a custodian of the law exactly. as a judge and was found unfit to be in that position. And um, the EFF has had a similar situation because they've brought a now impeached um, former public Secretary protector Kaman, also yeah. into that, into parliament. And, you know, in the, in the parliamentary normal sense of being an MP, it's up to us as the electorate to decide whether that matters to us whether the fact that this person was found unfit in their previous responsibility, a legal responsibility, both the public protector and um, being a judge are legal posts. If mm -hmm. they were found unfit to be, um, you know, people who, who meet out the law, who carry out the law, should we find them fit to be lawmakers? And we as the public saw those people on those lists and voted for them to be in those seats. But with the JSE, it's a step further. Because now you're saying an impeached judge is going to be sitting there and appointing judges, which is what the JSC does. Yeah. And I think that was where um, it became a step further. But I think in total, it's a question about what are the criteria we believe 
people should have in order to be in those positions. Um, Tessa, I mean, two things now. Do you think that, uh, you know, there is a loophole somewhere? As you're saying that, uh, you know, we haven't really um, had conversations, particularly looking at this, because, uh, you know, the Constitution also doesn't dictate who gets elected uh, in Parliament, except those that have been convicted, uh, you know, of uh, crime there. But do you think that uh, with Dr. John Clope, they saw a gap, uh, a loophole somewhere, uh, hence, you know, they proposed uh, him for the nomination in the JSC. And also, um, you know, what happens now, you know, for the MK, but because we know that, uh, you know, they can't challenge the interdict. Well, you know, I think the loophole, again, um, you know, we're talking about it as if it's a legal loophole, but the law can't resolve all political problems. Yeah. And the political problem and the political question is, who do we think is good enough to represent us to do the work of parliament? Yeah. And as South Africans, I don't think we've thought about what the work of parliament is enough to answer that question. That's why we, are, we barely know the names of people in parliament. But one of the roles of parliament is to appoint judges. Yeah. That's what parliament does. We often say the president appoints. No, the president takes his recommendation from people yeah. who come from the JSC, which includes people in parliament. So we must do better as the people who are voting. But if we don't want particular people to be the ones that are, that are writing our laws or the ones that are appointing our judges, then perhaps we need to do that in the electoral process, yeah. not the legal process. So we've left it up to, to parties within parliament to now take this up to, to a legal process and the law decides. Mm. But I think that we have dropped the ball as the electorate. We didn't go to those lists and consider who's going to be in parliament. I mean, if you ask any South African, to name 10 parliamentarians who are not ministers. The majority of us can't do that. Yeah. Yet we are sending those people to do really important work. And we must ask, what does it take to be fit for purpose? And like you said, the constitution doesn't say, these are all the criteria, because yeah. when will it start and end? It's not the constitution's job to do that. It is our job as the electorate to do that. So we've ran out of time, but I'm going to ask you this question. I mean, uh, what can we take from this? I mean, uh, we've been seeing uh, corruption cases flying, uh, you know, political party interdicts, all these uh, things that have been happening in Parliament year in, year out. What would be the lessons here? Well, I think the first lesson is um, around the parties and, and the MKP particularly. Um, that, you know, there's, there are political um, things that you do to gain traction. And I do think that part of creating this debate for the MKP was about political traction and being able to get um, you know, people's eyes and ears on the party. And the party's done this in many different ways. Um, they've not been shy about being challenged in court or going to court. And we must not be distracted by the politics. We must ask questions about the work. Because the political debate about you know, who's after John Flope, that's a, a, a gimmick that any politician can play with us. Our job as the electorate is to focus on the work of parliament and what we think the criteria is for people who can do that work. Tessa, much appreciated. Uh, please come back again, you know, to unpack these issues. Uh, that was very insightful. Much appreciated. Thank you. That was sociologist and political analyst Tessa Dooms that uh, taking us through Dr. John Klopp's very recent resignation and what this actually means for the JSC and MK party and also what should have been done before uh, you know, we found ourselves in uh, this uh, situation. On that note, that's how we wrap up today's episode of Soweto Today. Remember, we love hearing from you, so please feel free to talk to us about this episode. Send us an email at Soweto Today at SowetoTV.co.za. Alternatively, you can call us or WhatsApp us at 081-531-8857. Bahai to Nagetabu Mulukwani and the rest of the team. It's good night from us and thank you for watching. But stay tuned for the latest news updates coming up next. Bye-bye.